Hey everyone, uh, Joe and Isaias from the Automator and, and Alessandro from Italy, uh, who's joining us. We were going to have a little discussion here. I was talking to Alessandro because we had talked before about using AutoHotKey and do some really cool stuff. And you're in a couple of the videos before, but I had said, do you, are you using you know classes and objects? And you said, well, sort of, but more with other languages than you are with AutoHotKey, right? And I said, hey, this would be kind of cool to talk about classes and objects in other languages and how similar they are with AutoHotKey and, and whatnot. So that's just setting the stage. Yeah. Um, Jose, do you want so us to start talking a little bit about like what our course covers, the, the URL above me here? Yeah, so we are actually finishing up with the course in which we go ahead and give a, a little bit more information about how classes and objects are handled in AutoHotKey. And basically one of the biggest issues that we have is that not many people understand what are members of an object what are properties and methods? People have almost no idea what they are because when you're using AutoHotKey, you're not really dealing with big programs. So you don't have to understand those. You're just doing quick automation, right? But once you understand how classes and objects work, it makes a lot of things easier and it makes a little bit more sense, right? The only thing is that I do not have a lot of experience in objects in other uh, uh, languages. Alessandro here might have a little bit more things, but the little experience that I do have, um, I do mention for, uh, I do know, for example, that objects in AutoHotKey are a little bit more limited. There's a few things that I cannot do in AutoHotKey that I should be, able, but I would be able to do it in other languages, especially about uh, scope, which is that some uh, properties or you know class variables that I'm using should not be accessed from outside of the class yeah. or functions or methods that are that only belong to the class and you cannot use them from outside. That is something that you cannot really do in AutoHotKey version one, but I think in other languages you can. Can you expl explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. so um, uh, to introduce me myself briefly, I'm... I'm uh, an appassionate uh, programmer of AutoHotKey, and but right now I'm working as a front-end uh, developer full-time. So I'm used to work with uh, Angular uh, most of the time, uh, which means uh, that if we are gonna talk about classes, we are gonna be talking um, at least in my area of, of expertise about uh, Angular uh, classes or TypeScript classes. Um, and then we are, it's going to be interesting to compare it to uh, what classes do in uh, uh, how to hotkey. Right, yes. So um, basically in your, in, in Angular, which I would assume that's JavaScript, right? That's a so, type uh, of Java. Yeah, we, we call Angular uh, a, fr a framework mm -hmm. uh, to develop to develop um, front end application, mm -hmm. which are when when they are run are run directly from your uh, browser, and uh, when uh, you are developing it, um, one of the main structure of a, an Angular uh, application is the component. And this is a key name that we use to identify uh, a piece of uh, um, a code, which is composed in three parts. So if I can show you. Yeah, sure. So I should have here, I should have here some example of uh, an Angular application. Uh, this is a, a site which is um, stack blitz in in which you have some examples of applications so in this case you can see a little bit maybe of the um, can you see yes uh, correctly yeah you can see a little bit of the structure of uh, a, a really simple angular application and uh, mm, for example mm, this is like the, the app component uh, is usually the main component of an Angular application, 
in this case there is maybe uh, there is uh, only this one so because it's a really small application and as you can see there are three files one is uh, a css file which is uh, responsible for the style of the component oh, looks yeah yeah but there is also an html uh, uh, file which is um, responsible for the template the template part of the component and there is a typescript.ts file in which there is um, mostly the logic the logic of the component uh, which is written in typescript which is uh, similar to javascript but with types so um, pretty much when it, when it is is, is going to be compiled down it is going to become javascript just javascript but right now it's type typescript and as you can see uh, there are types so like when you strings yeah, when, and other things yeah. yes yes exactly when you define okay. a variable you should uh, say define uh, what the type what is. what is it yes so um, what happens uh, in the majority of the circumstances is that when you want to define, for example, let's see this uh, variable categories, yep. which is uh, an array, an array of objects uh, with two properties, name and key. Instead of doing like <laughs> he's doing in this example, which is uh, defining it which is he's saying type any which doesn't really uh, <laughs> yeah he's use, just using yeah yeah it he's is not like, really typing it yeah, <laughs> he's just exactly. using whatever he is yeah yeah uh, instead of doing that what we usually tend to do is that we create mm -hmm. another file uh let's not create it right there let's create it here uh, another file which can be called uh, uh, models Let's call it models.ts. And in this file, we usually define um, some of the classes we want to use inside of the component. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the syntax is the, uh, the TypeScript syntax. So we got to have to export, export class. And then the name of the class, uh, what was it that we were trying component, to? Component, actually. The categories is name and key. Let's give it a name, which is uh, something interesting. So name key, <laughs> name key class, for example. And then it has uh, two properties, name, which is a string, and then key which is also a string I do think, but could be whatever, could be a number. Yeah, number one, you have to put class in there, but yeah, where it's just- mm, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now is recognizing it. If we come back to the app component, mm -hmm. uh, instead of doing this, we could say that category is an array of this, uh, of this object that we define in models. So copying this name and going back to the app component. Or... App component, yes. We would be able to post it here and we have to import it. And then it should, it should be correctly implemented. And now if we, uh, for example, inside this uh, method, which is the on init method, we uh, try to access this uh, categories. We should be able to have uh, mm, um, a better intelligence. For example, if we access the first element of the array, we should be able to see that inside of it, there is key and name, which are the property uh, yeah. of the class where we just defined. So this is one of the uses. Um, a, a simple one, <laughs> a really <laughs> simple one. But, no. um, but yeah, if you want to say something, uh, Isaiah, 
Yeah. Because so, otherwise, I will continue to speak forever. <laughs> no, don't worry. So I, what I'm going to do, what I was just doing right now, it was just grabbing it, uh, that same thing that you are that you have on your screen right now. And I'm just going ahead and converting it technically into auto hot key so that we can compare how it looks like. In this case, production is P and then research. That's the last one I'm going to do for now. So name research and key equals that is r so while you are doing that we can add the test in typescript there is uh, the possibility to define not only classes but also interfaces mm -hmm. interfaces are like um less powerful version of a class because they don't have a constructor and are just a static definition of uh, an object with types inside. And they do uh, tend to not have anything. They do tend to be completely erased, I think, when the, when the, when the application is compiled. Instead, okay. classes remain there. So there are a lot of differences. I was uh, uh, watching uh, this site to have a, um, a schema of what are the differences, but mainly um, is the constructor, which is a TypeScript class obviously can have it and TypeScript interface uh, mostly don't have it. So it's just a way um, to uh, define uh, the types of an object, but if the object is really simple. Okay. So, and, and this is a very good example uh, of where the two languages, at least, um, you know, differ and where it's a little bit easier in one of them and where it's not in the other one. So let me just go ahead and do this real quick. Uh, I'll just one second. Let me share my screen. If a index equals four, that's all. So let's go ahead and do this. Let me show my screen real quick. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I just tried to copy one part of the program. So one of the things that happened happens when you are actually kind of like dealing with um, with web development is that, as you just mentioned, there's three parts to it. One of them is the logic that you were talking about, that you were showing in the TS script. You have the styling, which is the CSS, and you have the layout, which is the HTML. So in that language, you divide everything like that. In our hotkey, we can do the, uh, the object, the logic in an object like this. And um, the, the graphical part is just handled by the GUI, uh, the GUI commands. And basically you have the, the styling and layout are both with the GUI commands, okay? So you don't have that separation there, which makes it really difficult to create good layouts in our hotkey which is one of the reasons why most of the programs use kind of like HTML approach to it. But here's the deal. One of the first thing is that in uh, the language that he was using TypeScript, for each variable, he was actually setting a type, even though in that example, some of the types were any, which means like any type of variable. But in this case, I know that in the end, they were being used as a map, which is kind of like a, or an object, right? So what I did is that I just selected selected series and selected categories and set them up to objects as they would be used in the end. Mm -hmm. And categories was actually an array of maps. So you had one little map here that had a key value pair, accounting and key one A. The next one would be marketing and its key would be M and so on. So it, it was an array of uh, maps or objects as you're looking at right here. And then you had the last one, which was a Boolean uh, uh, 
type of variable? Variable, yes. Then in auto hotkey, it would be true or false. Now, the main difference is that in other languages, you probably have to tell what type of variable it is right in front of the variable name, which is basically what you are doing. You are doing like Boolean with brackets and so on, just to yeah, mention that it was a Boolean, yeah. right? Yeah, in TypeScript, it is just after the, the variable. Is right. To in that case, it's the other way around. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. It was just after. But yes, in some languages like in C some, shot, yeah, C -sharp it would be before. before. Yeah. Yeah. But in Auto Hotkey, we do not have the concept of types. So right now, selected category was created as an object. But later on, if I just want to selected categories, I could just put a string in it, and nothing will happen. It would just right, switch right. back into a string. In other languages, that is not possible. If you created it as an object, you cannot treat it as a string. That's what the limitation is. Now, yeah. the second part that I notice is that you have kind of like an initialization, uh, like a function that gets called automatically is what I assume it is. The, the init function that you had in there, it seems to be that as soon as you call the app component, it would automatically be called. Yeah, yeah. So that, in that, that, there's key, a reason for that. And if you want after, I can yeah. briefly explain. Yeah. Yeah. So this... Yeah. Yeah. But let I let you finish first. <laughs> uh, don't worry. So basically, in Auto Hotkey, that would be called, you know, that would be with a new function. If you're inside a class and you use two dash, two underscores and the word new, this function is going to be called automatically when the component is created. This is basically the same. Now, you had something that is very interesting that we are missing in Auto Hotkey, and some people might want it, which is the slice. I don't know if you noticed that you said like slide. Uh, there, there's a section that says selected categories dot slice one comma three. What I would uh, yeah, uh, that, what I would understand uh, by that is that it was going to grab only the first three objects and store them. Right. So let me double check on that. So you have here. Selected categories equals categories dot slice one to three. And I would assume by that, this is something that I'm not familiar with, but I would assume that from the four or five objects that you have there, accounting, marketing, production, and research, it would grab only three of them. It would grab accounting, marketing, and production and put them in selected categories first. Right, right. right? So, 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 so it, it, <laughs> In this case, is selected category selected categories is defined as any, but it it, it in 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 a bet, a better approach would be to define to define the type of selected categories categories as the same as categories. Right. And slice is in this case a method that is native of arrays. And there are in TypeScript a lot of methods that, that are automatically associated with arrays. Uh, and there are really powerful. Some of them are, are crazy yeah. powerful, like find, uh, filter, map, reduce. You can do crazy stuff. Right. Uh, in this case, it's just grabbing from those four objects, it's yeah. just grabbing three of them. Right? Yeah. And right. notice how you did that in one line. It was in line 19. So yes. the selected categories are just accounting, marketing, and production, and it's leaving out research. Research is not selected, by default, at least. Right. That's what it's trying to do, right? But in Outer Hotkey, if you're trying to do the same thing, this is where it comes and in the sense that I would have to use a for loop because we do not have a slice command, okay? So for us, you would have to go for each category, okay? So I would have to use these categories for, it is an array, okay? So the first number, I'm gonna store it in I, and cat would be that object. You see that object? And right. I would do this for each object, I'm gonna push it into the selected categories. But as soon as I reach number four, I break. So I, right. do, not, right. I do not enter number four into this group. So for us, it is around five lines of code, what for you in your language was a one-liner, you right. see? So those are the types of differences of what you would need to do. Now, for me, it is easier to define the variables. And notice, while you were speaking, I was just typing it out and I just did it. 
and it didn't take that long because I do not have to be careful with the type. I just right. put whatever I want. And actually, even if I put this as uh, uh, text now and later on decide to change it, then I can do it. In TypeScript, you can't. So those are basically some of the little differences. But notice that I can do exactly what he's doing in, in auto hotkey. I can do it anyways. But the difference is that sometimes in auto hotkey, uh, we would have to use a little bit more code, lines of code, to do something that in other languages is a one-liner. You know? Right, right. So now go um, ahead and yeah, go ahead and explain the the initialization portion of it, whatever you were, whatever you uh, were saying. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what I was trying to convey before, but I don't know if I, I managed to do that, is that inside this file, which is the which is modus, you usually have normal type of classes. So the one which Isaiah uh, was talking about. So a class with properties, methods, a constructors, and whatever. Mm -hmm. In the, the component is also a class, as you can see, but this is a, a different type of class because it is a class, it is a class of the component. So is it does work as a class, but is is has some 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 working that is um, Already that are defined. automatically because right. of Angular. So and also also um, services are also a class because pretty much everything is a class. <laughs> but yeah. but in this case there are some there is some stuff that is uh, only related to um, components. So for example, if we um, you can implement some methods. Uh, that are Angular, uh, that, uh, that are built in in Angular. For example, the on init, which is uh, so the, the right uh, the right syntax for that would be implements. Here we have to have here an implement, implements, and then on init, on init. So yeah. and this will import on init from the Angular core C, mm -hmm. and this with with determine a custom um, like uh, um, uh, a custom method for yeah. your own initialization so basically yeah. if you do not if you do not implement it it would use whatever the original code had is what if you're you, saying yeah if you don't have the implements on init uh, or or whatever other uh, spe special method of angular mm -hmm. uh, the component would not automatically uh, execute a method when it, with, when it when it spawned. Yes. Right. And but, there are other methods like that also um, built in in Angular. For example, the on destroy, which is a method that if you implement, uh, will automatically be, be called when the component dies. For example. Okay. Or uh, or there are others like the after view in it. Which uh, will be called when the HTML is rendered, and other ones. Right. So this is a, also a class, uh, but is a class a, a different type of class. <laughs> let me let me let me let me, and, and let me kind of like bring back that to auto hotkey in a sense. So go back to the code with app components. So so here's the thing. Um, quick question. Let me ask you some. This part where it says export class, that means that you're making that class um, as a public class that you can access it in anywhere on the code or what does export mean in this context? Um, can you say, can you say, can you say class by itself without exporting it or not? In this case, in this case, not, not in this case, not. So, no, but there are situations in which you can create a class and not without exporting. exporting. Yes, yes, okay. of course. Okay, so in some cases you can export, some others you don't. Now, yeah. this class that is app component, that is not a name that you came up with yourself. That is a specific name from a from a class that already exists, or that is something that you created that name. You can change that name to whatever you want. So this is how it works. When uh, Remember when I talked about the 
the structure of the component, which is yes, uh, yeah. composed of, of three files. Yeah. When you want to create a new component, you, you will not manually create the three files. What you mm -hmm. would usually do is have a, open a terminal and use uh, the Angular CLI to uh, launch a command, a yeah. which will automatically create the three files with some basic structure. Yeah. And the basic structure would be pretty much uh, uh, this one. If I yeah. just uh, take out this stuff uh, and and maybe this stuff, uh, this is the basic structure of uh, a component, at, at least from the TS part. So this mm -hmm. will be created automatically. The name of the class will be um, something referring to the name of the of the file also. They will mm -hmm. be connected in some ways, depending in in which which uh, name of the component you will type in the CLI in a CLI command. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in a sense, that's not exact. The the export part in here means that the component is available pretty much for for the module. Exactly. Uh, so I'm making it available yeah. for the module. Yeah. If I don't and, do that. Is it's not going to be there. Right. And in this case, it is automatically because you want all all your components to be connected to the, the module mm -hmm. of the application. But for example, in the other file, which is this one, if I want to have a class which is not exported, I can do it. Uh, for example, let's say that key, instead of being a string, is another class uh, like... Uh, mm, I don't know what name can I have it like pizza. Let's say pizza. So <laughs> class you pizza. You can have the class pizza now. Okay. Yeah. Class pizza is gonna be with uh, one uh, uh, property, which mm. we can make optional, which yeah. is gonna be ham. So right. there you go. Ha ham. And it could be true be or false. Uh, yeah, well, it would be a let's boolean. Let's say it's a boolean, boolean right. right? So what happens is that now this class can only be accessed in this file, but I cannot uh, access that class in other files. Is that right? Right. If I no, if no. I try to use it here, it's, it's gonna, gonna it's work. gonna say that this file doesn't have export export members which are named pizza. Exactly. But because key name is exported if i export key name uh it 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 has it has pizza inside of it right so basically what is going on is just just think about it as global it is a variable kind of like a class is global to all the other um uh files or whatever is included but if you do not make it if you don't export it it's kind of like local to this module file unless this module file is actually exported as well. That's what I'm getting at from there. But again, we don't have that in our hotkey. As soon as you have a class and you import it into your, or, or if you write it on your script, um, in general, what is gonna happen is that you will have access to it everywhere else. You do not have control where that class can be used or cannot be yeah. used. Right. Uh, do you have, uh, do you have, uh, because here you can also specify uh, private or protected or uh, public, uh, for example, properties and also methods? No. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. So here okay. you can, yeah. Hold on one second. Um, so basically, in our hard key, we do not have that at all. We do not have privacy, at least in version one. In version two, we do have some sort of privacy by using the static keyword. We can have inside a class, if you use a static for a variable or for a method, those belong only to the class and cannot be accessed by an instance of the class. Oh yeah, but, yeah. That's, but, but, that's but that, exactly the same. Here is the same. Right, but but, but that is keyword. only but that is only on uh, version two. Out of okay. version one doesn't have that. Okay, so exactly. So um, 
if I can show a, a, a really small example of using static. Mm -hmm. So if we have a, here a method uh, which is um, static. Yeah. Mm, let's call it uh, mm. heat. <laughs> yeah. You can heat a pizza. And uh, this method uh, has maybe a parameter, which is uh, the the how much and you know the heat how much temperature yeah temperature is yeah how much yeah which is a number, and then what is going to do is just a console log, which is basically shows show uh, yeah like a message as uh, some sort of a message box but inside mm -hmm. of, of the javascript console mm -hmm. um, now notice notice that you're putting here into temperature you're putting that is a number so basically you're telling the function exactly what to expect and if you don't pass that to it it will complain about it that right. is in our hotkey we do not have that um so yeah it, it has its good things because it allows you to control the, the, um, for bugs, because if you pass something wrong to a, a function, it would complain, but it makes it more cumbersome because now you have to write, you have to type more <laughs> to get the same done. When which auto hotkey, I do not have to type what it is. It's just, you know, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> so, Let's say this is the example. If I can just save, okay. So right now we have two methods. One is heat, which is accessible directly from the class. Mm -hmm. um, and the other is other method, which is will be accessible only in the instances of the class. So if we now go back to Hold the on. app component. I'm sorry, when, when, you, when you say pizza, the other method will not work. Like, uh, because I, I know, so. I okay, no, because in our hotkey uh, methods, if they are actually not static, they can be accessed from the instance and from the class as well. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. But, but I don't know how this is, how it goes. You can try it, but I don't yeah. think it will. So. Mm. You have to, you have to import it. Yeah, right. I was trying and, to, and basically that that particular uh, method, well, that class is not. Um, you're not exporting it. So oh yes, so yeah. I so so basically, it. Uh, exactly. So basically, that's that that's the part that makes it a little bit, you know. We we need this. The one. security, the security on it is that for you to access the pizza one, you have to use the class that is available to you so right now yeah, yeah. right <laughs> right so if t dot name which is of type pizza right oh my god if i don't remember if i no, don't remember it is, correctly no it's no it's, it's, key, key. It's, key. It's, key. it's key it's key so this is what happens when you don't have names that mean anything <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh you have to type it uh, correctly yeah yeah so yeah right. there you so go so now have, now you have access to ham and other method right but that, that is without instantiating the you you didn't create an instance of it oh well you did yeah okay you did uh, yeah, it on I, the other side uh inside name uh, inside of name k oh my god so i kind of did but not really so you did it yourself uh, automatically here on line three I don't know if this uh, would make any sense to have a static key in in without having the the class exported because we don't we we right. can't really no, access. No. It. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any sense. So now That's if we go anyway. back here, right. if we do pizza, yeah, you can do pizza now. We can do pizza. So so so, so just just notice that. Now you can use yeah. pizza, right? Now you can, can use pizza give some because parameters. it was allowed to be used. So right. the 
developer must allow that that thing to be. Um, oh, this one's a number. Yeah, it doesn't let you a string. You see all the little details. It tells you like you cannot do that because as soon as you put a string in there, it gave you an error because it is like, no, I'm expecting a number right there. So for example, if this method returns something, in this case, yeah. it, it won't return anything, but, but we can, can return, return return the same number. Yeah, return four. Yeah, for example. Return number. Temperature, well, temperature right? Just, right? Just return whatever you give it. Okay, so now we could assign it without so now t has to be also a number number otherwise it doesn't make not... any sense and then yeah. we can for example log it so in 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 the in our practice we will use these static methods mainly to um, we have a practice in which we use static methods to um, to do a, a sort of a construct, uh, a con a, an alternative constructor. Mm -hmm. So we will call the create instance directly for, from the name of the class and launch the new inside the static method create instance and mm -hmm. then return the, the, class. the object. And, and, yeah. and, and that is good sometimes when you want to make sure that only one object is created and not more. Because, for example, um, let me let me share my screen real quick for this one. Because, and this is right. where where uh, this type of things um, uh, you might not see the information right away. You you might not get it right away. But there's some instances in which in which you need that. So, for example, I have a variable here. Let me make this bigger. So let's say that I have my pizza object. And that is a new pizza object, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing is that in our hotkey, you can have a second pizza too, right? One and two. New pizza object. And there you go. Now, just from the sudden, you have two pizza objects. But what if it is kind of like a database object and you only want one database open? So now you have db equals new database and you're calling your object. And what you want to happen is that when you call by mistake or whatever, a new database, that it doesn't, that it either returns the same one that you already opened or that it gives you an error because you don't want a second database at all. Okay. Right. And, 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 and that is because you want your object to be, because there's a single instance object. What you were describing helps you there because you call the constructor manually and the constructor checks whether the object was created or not. And if it was created, just returns the original one or if it was not created, creates one. So that, that's where it goes into that static methods that you were discussing. Um, that is one of the uses of it. There are other uses for it, but that is one of them. And this is one of kind of like the uh, examples where you might want that if you won't have a database or something that has a, a information that is that you just needed to open once and, and you don't be, you don't want to have 10 objects opening the same thing. You just want once of them. Yeah, then that's where. Yeah, right. But because in I didn't think about it in that way but right it's a pattern that we use to mm -hmm. avoid using new everywhere <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's the other thing uh, but basically there are different patterns there are different uses for it uh, that is just one of them that i thought that it is kind of like a clear example of where that would apply and why would you need that that in auto hotkey we don't really have it that way we use we we can do it but um not that way, <laughs> I, I, I would explain like what, what you have ways of working around it. So what I would do is that the new instance always returns this. See if there is a thing. no, but but I would I would just return the 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 uh, the, the instance like instance number or whatever. 
Oh, okay. So, or a pointer, say for example, a pointer, I'm working with a pointer. If you create a new object, it would be if pointer, if this pointer return it, else then you would call this dot create point uh, db or something like that right and right. that that method so basically you're forcing that whenever you create a new version of it it goes ahead and creates one for you and now you have create db and that would set this dot pointer to a number i don't know whatever so a the, dll call whatever it is let me ask you a question uh isaiah yeah. so the fact that before the new drag those two uh, small, uh, uh, I, I don't even know the name of the character. Uh, the, the, you're talking about the braces here? Uh, before the new. Um, the, this, the, the underscore. New, yeah, underscore. Right, th those two underscores. Which, which is pretty universal, correct? And when using classes across languages, I, I've mm. noticed. That. Yeah, well, they, they use that in certain, in C, languages they are very common yes but in this case if you do not use the um the uh the underscores what is going to happen is that this is now a normal method for your object that okay. you would have to call whenever right. you want it's but, like but, the... right but in general um the one with it on two underscores is actually called automatically. That is a special method. It is a special type of method. Um, the same happens with call, like this one here. This one gets called every single time a function gets called that hasn't been defined on your object. So in this case, I defined create db, right? So if you call create db, it would actually go ahead and do this. But what happens if I call app component dot delete DV? That method hasn't been defined on my object. Okay. Right. When you call a method like that that hasn't been defined, this method call gets called instead. And it has two parameters: the name of the method, method name, and the parameters. So right now, this one here, if I put a message box here, message box, method name. Right, not implemented or something like that? Well, not exactly. So I could do whatever I want. So I could use a switch statement or I could just, and this is one of the interesting things. What I would usually do, and that's what I do in my libraries, is that I use the call method. So I could do a DLL call with whatever method you're calling and the DLL that you're calling. So, and then params. And now automatically I can do all the DLL calls for an object. You see what I mean? Because now, and let me say, and this is something for real, this is, this is what I do. So I would say uh, scintilla DLL. So if I have a DLL, I do a DLL call for scintilla DLL, and I put the name of the method that you pass. And now my, my object, so let's say here. See, right, so you are automatically implementing the method. I am automatically, I don't have to implement one by one. Right. That's what I'm saying. So right now, I don't have to implement not even one of them. And now I can just call all the scintilla methods, whatever that is. Um, Easy, flexible, yeah. Right, so I could just do it. I just do one of them. And then if there is a function that I want to have control of how it works, because that function, I don't know, I'm dealing with buffers or I'm dealing with the memory in a very specific way, then I would define that function here, like uh, show characters. And that function in particular, if you call it, um, then I would create my buffer, you know, numput, and I would do my 10,000 numputs for something in here. And then before I do that, and then I call the, the DLL call for that particular thing. 
not sure if you understand what I'm getting at. So basically, yeah. So if there is a, if this is my way of doing it, I implemented the whole thing right away. But if there is a specific function that is really difficult, especially because it is 32 bit and 64 bit, then I handle the difficulty and then call the DLL call for right. the user. with the right parameters, right? Yeah. yeah. But basically, in, in our case, that those functions that have the underscore, they're special functions and they usually get called automatically, like delete. So the delete function as well, that one gets called automatically when you. Um, when you do this, like the CSI and empty. So I created a new class, put it in that variable. As soon as I empty the variable, that function gets called, deleted automatically. And I don't know how that is in your language, by the way. So how do you call those automatic functions though? Uh, you don't, you can't interact with DLL in- No, 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 not, not, not DLL, not, not DLLs. I'm, I'm not talking about that. In, when you create a class, Okay, in your language, it, are there functions that get called automatically? So there, like there the are new, the delete. So there are. So in in the in in the example which we were talking before, mm -hmm. uh, those those one after the implements are called automatically in specific at specific times. So, so whenever so so there's yeah. a few of them that you have to tell that you're making it like on like for example on destroy, on destroy. okay uh, yeah route now it's gonna say that you are not implementing them correctly because you have to have the method yeah ng on destroy right and then you can do whatever here for example uh what we usually do inside here if we have some subscriptions or, or, or some or subscriptions yeah, you subscription or to observer. Yeah, you just uh, unsubscribe from them, and so you clear the memory. And those, for example, in uh, starting with ng, are special methods. But you have also to call them in the implements. But there is also, uh, I think, even though I'm not so uh, skilled in it. There are some methods like with the underscore also dealing with the prototypes of objects, but I, I will not <laughs> I will not go into it because no, exactly, yeah. I don't I don't I, will, I don't have to, I don't want to say something <laughs> that I'm really not sure about. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Well what we were realizing uh, is even though like I said I've I will from time to time use classes, but I don't I haven't been writing them and, and from looking at the stuff that Isaiah has been doing in our course, um, I was surprised at how overall similar functions and classes the concept is and, and dealing with some things. But then there's all these extra other things that you can do once you understand classes that you don't have to know right away, kind of like what you're alluding to, right? You're using yeah, them, exactly. you know all the bells and whistles of all the stuff. And more importantly, like some of the examples Isaiah was showing here, it's more about the practical examples of using them than it is understanding the concept itself. Often the concept itself is you're like, oh, it just gets called this new. Or well, actually your example with the um when it when there is no defined uh, method that this one gets called by default, right? And in my I actually I was thinking the same thing as you were, Alessandro, I think of like a debug kind of thing of like, hey, this doesn't actually exist, you know, um, and it allows you to to pipe it in there. But he was showing a real world, like the the true value of once you start really using them to their potential of what you can do with them, which I'm sure after a while you would have it would have dawned on you like, wait a minute, I can actually pipe in stuff here and use any DLL or whatever, right? I, right. So so that that is just kind of like a very quick example. Yeah. Um, not not and, and and that example is not gonna be um applicable to anybody i was just sure, like right. the, re the reason why that exists uh, is for you to actually um be a take into consideration when you do not know the the function that is going to be uh called right okay but okay. in any case what i do want to tell you mm -hmm. is that for example in in 
one of the things that I noticed that it is the best of objects and you showed it on your end as well, particularly on your end, is that you import it from the core, right? It, you use the import, um, if you can go back to the code that you were showing. Right. And the, at the beginning you say, you know, import component on destroy on in it from Angular core, right? You imported that. Right. That is code that you have never seen at all, right? You don't know how right. it works. If you do not use the word implements down here, this implements on init and on destroy, if you do not use those, your object is going to use whatever has been created for you. It's going to use it. Because, and that's one of the good things about classes, is that it, it is kind of like a template. They already have the code for you. You just import it and put it on your object. Right. Now, if you think that you have a special need that the core does not handle, okay, then you implement it yourself. And then of you course, say, yeah. implements on in it. And then you say, this is how it should work in my case. So now you just modified code that was already there without breaking anything else because right, you just right. use the template, everything else is there, but you implement it yourself. So basically that is what classes allow you to do. And that is something that in AutoHotKey you can do as well. You can actually import things from other objects that are already there. And if you don't like how they do one particular thing, you can just modify it yourself basically almost the same as you are doing here. Right. And also in here, you can extend classes and implement interfaces. And there is a, a lot much more complexity, but we could go on and on. <laughs> so I don't yeah. know. And also, uh, I do. I do apologize for my language barrier. If if I'm not talking so. No, no, I think that was okay. Right. Yeah. Getting back to that, that's where I've been watching the, the course and just understanding extending classes and just going how amazing. Once you understand how you can modularize things and make I'm like, and and use the dot notation methodology to me it's just so much more intuitive Isaiah and I were in a long call where we we're talking about um auto hotkey and the 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 v1 well the um the vanilla version comparing it to l and how I didn't realize at the time until we were actually in the call I'm like you know I was looking learning web scraping at the time and trying to follow at the time this was when vanilla and l were both kind of like you know prevalent but not there was no one dominating and i would see one example of the code using the the vanilla version and the other one using l and like, <laughs> I grasp it because i didn't even understand this it's so much clearer than the other. It was really through that dot notation it's just what really makes it so much easier to follow yes to it is it is that's how it usually exactly. is exactly exactly but uh, also one uh, one of the advantages of TypeScript is is this one that uh, so in an Angular application you have npm or node modules that you can install uh, how many you want there there are libraries online uh, of node modules for whatever you want to do so <laughs> so you can just uh, import a lot of those and uh, use them. And sometimes you import stuff there's, that is really complex. Right? Yes, there is the documentation, but maybe you want to know what properties there are inside, what methods there are inside. And the definition of types is extremely useful in TypeScript to facilitate um, this navigation of uh, methods, methods and properties. Because what will what usually happens in a, a pure JavaScript environment, also in Node, for example, is that if you don't read the documentation, if you don't know in your in your head what is inside what, you pretty much can't do. <laughs> you 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 can maybe there are some types of intelligence that helps you in that, but. Uh, not so much as as uh, as it will happen in TypeScript. Right. Now, notice 
and this is one of the things why you know people tend to gravitate toward easier languages. Notice on the left side on his screen, it says dependencies. So those are things that you need to have, okay, for this little piece of code to work. Right. And usually there's a lot of different things that your code depends on that um, you're not even aware of. And that's where, where right. languages like auto hotkey, yeah, so those are the dependencies, yes, just to make that so little cool. tiny piece of code work. So um, what happens is that in auto hotkey, those dependencies are hidden from you. You don't even need them. And, and especially because all the dependencies that AutoHotKey uses are built into Windows. So you open your program and you already have all the DLLs that you need. Right, right. But some of, some of those will equate also to some library, would be the equivalent of AutoHotKey libraries. Yes. You could import. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so basically, some of those things are just libraries, which, of course, in AutoHotKey, you can import libraries and so on. But most of what you can do in AutoHotKey, you basically do not need anybody else's code, most of it. Unless you need something very specific or special, or you're actually pushing the boundaries of AutoHotKey, you most of the time, with whatever you have in there available, you can do a lot of interesting stuff. In other languages, automatically you get all these dependencies. You, you didn't even download those. You just have them there. And, 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 and right. as, soon as, you, the, as soon as you start typing, like it gets the dependencies right away, right? Right. Some, some, some of them in, in this case are pre-installed because this is a, um, a demonstration for the, this library, which is a free one, Prime Energy. Which imports a lot of uh, a lot of Angular components out automatically with their right. logic, their functioning, their variables. Which is great. Which is great right. because we don't have that much, you know, we do not have that many um, controls available in our hotkey. We have kind of like the basic ones. Right. So, right. And so and we are we are just just touching. Uh, the surface, yeah, yeah, yeah this, this, the surface. So much more. <laughs> yes, that's how it is. That's right. But in general, I think that uh, you have noticed that classes in other languages are very similar. Like the, the way how we do it also in AutoHotKey is very similar to mainstream because what we're looking at right now in this Java TS type of uh, classes is the most common thing. So you have to specify the types. You have to um, make sure that the class that you're using is public. You cannot use a class that is not public. So this difficulty, you know, quotation marks around that is really common. Most of the languages have that. Out of hard key, on the other hand, gives you part of it, but it is way too flexible. You can do almost what you can use any type of class without right, regards right, right. whether it is public or, pop or private. It doesn't matter. So basically, exactly. yeah, and no difference. There are pros and cons to that. Yeah. And when I first started programming in TypeScript and also in Angular, I I was seeing mostly the cons because I was uh, used to uh, define <laughs> variables wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> But uh, slowly, I understood that some boundaries can be useful, um, right? And that is the thing. One of the key points that Joe and I, we discuss very frequently is the ease of use of auto hotkey is great if you're not a programmer. If you're just doing quick stuff really quickly, just go ahead and mash something together real quickly. That's it. As soon as you start dealing with programs that are more complex, that flexibility becomes a problem. That's what happens with it. And um, having you to specify what type of variable it is, it's annoying, but in the end, it saves you from a lot of bugs just because you put number five when it was actually 5.0. 
and that makes your code break just because of that you know because you pass a float instead of a of a normal yeah integer. yeah exactly the the idea here is to uh, avoid how uh, how much as possible the errors to happen at runtime and to catch them before so you 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 are notified that 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 a property that you are trying to access doesn't exist before you you see the problem at runtime exactly when you exactly. when you see it uh, at runtime is already too late yeah <laughs> because in java in javascript pretty much when you have uh, an error in the console it already tells no, right. <laughs> and basically yeah in your case so basically while you're typing it gives you you know the squiggly lines if you type something that is wrong and before even compiling the code it checks for errors because after it's running, dude, it's gonna be very hard to catch, you know, because that's what we're expect that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid errors while running. We want to catch them all before we even set the program to run. Okay. This is why I would say again, still, if if you're not a programmer, and even mm -hmm. if you plan to be one, starting off with v1 and auto hotkey because it's so much more forgiving, right? It, it is, is easier to get started and get the ball moving, especially if you're not actually in like a course for college or something, right? Because yeah. you don't have very clear direction. So you're on your own and you're learning stuff. Now, you might develop bad behaviors, right? Because it's so forgiving, right? Which <laughs> later you need to curtail and change when you switch to even version two, which is part of it. That, that's what they're doing is they're saying, you know, it's just so loose. We're going to tighten it up a bit and make it a little bit. And better. just a little bit, because he's not that he's going to go ahead and, you know, make it a full programming language or something like that. It's not that. Yeah. It is basically the um, a few th key details that at least would help you catch the most common bugs. Right. Just, just, just for example, the, the elimination of the, the double syntax, the old one and the new one. The, the comments and the functions th that could be yeah <laughs> that saves a lot of <laughs> seen in that light right it's annoying it is annoying but it is helpful for you and i that are dealing with bigger programs when you uh, have somebody that just needs to rename a few files he doesn't care about if the variable has been set or not right. okay he doesn't care he just wants to load the files and change the name right so, um, well, what I still I was still going to say was, um, what's amazing, which I think we we somewhat got to in this video too, is how similar overall classes are, at least in these two languages, but in a lot of languages, right? Yes. But I still say, even if you start off in version one without a hotkey, you can get your feet wet, start learning. Our course covers both version one and a bit of the stuff in version two. Uh, and then, you know, switch over to version two at some point and you can be a little more structured. But what's amazing, it opens the door like Alessandro. I don't know if we, you know, you mind saying it, but like you're not a, a programmer, right? By by education, college and stuff. Right. And that right. you were using I'm... auto hotkey. And then what did you tell me at our last call? You're like, you've kind of not fulfilled your dream, but you're you're actually working in something you really wanted to do. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So yes. Right. So my education is in statistics so uh, i'm not exactly a program unfamiliar with programming languages but yes uh, it's, it's, it's hilarious because that's my background too and i think that's why it's a, a little easier for us right as it's we're sort of familiar with it yeah there you go. Awesome. Now, the other last two things, I first wanted to apologize to everybody watching this video if we made you hungry talking about pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pizzas. But the other thing that really made me laugh, now you're going to have to go back and watch the beginning of the video because you've seen I haven't moved, right? I haven't changed, is I didn't realize I was wearing this shirt. So, <laughs> I'm like, I was also not trying to laugh. I'm like, I got the perfect shirt on. Yeah, uh -huh. There you go. Right. right. <laughs> that was funny. That's <clears throat> awesome. So thanks everyone for watching. Thank you guys for talking through this stuff. And uh, again, classes are, they're definitely a little level up once you learn functions and stuff, but they're so yeah. powerful. Yeah. So I, I really encourage you guys to check it out. Bye.